Hey, what's up, guys? Sean here with Blue Ridge Silver Hound. We have the midweek edition of the Pocket Change Market Report, and uh, ironically, the final one for the month of October. Holy crap, Where where is the holidays going? Um, we have November and December left. Uh, we have approximately, if you guys are keeping score, uh, we have approximately, I don't know, six weeks six weeks worth of uh i i would say just um if you were going to take advantage of the market and you need money for the holidays you have about six weeks um things things certainly die off second week into december all right um the precious metals market you know is is really bolstering a lot of what we're seeing here today uh we have a tremendous lineup of beautiful varieties and errors uh, that I've sold here in the last 24 to 36 hours that we're going to discuss. Um, one emerging trend that I have seen, die clashes have been uh, quite strong sellers in the marketplace. If you do come across any of them, it doesn't matter what it is. I know Lincoln Sense have been some of the more easily accessible types out there. Um, you know, those obviously are going to be uh, the easiest to find out in change and out in those uh, those bank rolls, certainly. But uh, one thing I have noticed is uh, prices are extremely strong. Uh, in certain cases, most pieces go for 35 to 50 bucks. Um, that exhibits some pretty strong die clashing. So, you know, we have a couple of them to talk about here today. We'll We'll cover that as well. Uh, along with a myriad of other, other different pieces that folks have found and identified um, uh, simply going through, like I said, change, bankrolls, bankroll, coin roll hunting these days is still very much a popular activity for um, beginning um, coin collectors and some of the more advanced people looking to find like things like silver and all that still very popular uh, but let's not forget another way that you can obtain some of these pieces we're about to see here today the coin shows coin shops if you got them it's going to be a great opportunity for a lot of you to uh, uh to find those and um you know flip them keep them you know make them a part of your uh your collection uh there's really no wrong way of doing it so um there are a few a uh, few vintage pieces we'll take a look at as well in this report all right so uh, usually we uh kick things off here because uh, i do sell on a platform called whatnot it's one of the biggest brightest fastest growing live auction platforms uh today and uh that's right bring on the holidays you know we have again a good solid six weeks left of very active buying selling kind of opportunity here um from from both ends so you know from the end that we're going to talk about here today but also for those that collect by type graded coins currency uh bullion things like that again uh um there, there's kind of like a wide range of how you can approach this hobby uh but again this time of year every year is very active um is it any indication of the the market you know not usually uh, because it's just naturally a very active time of year. So there's a lot of activity going on on the platform whatnot. I sell on there as my name, Blue Ridge Silverhound. We do shows every Friday, and then we do the occasional pop-ups as well. We have one actually this afternoon at 3 p.m. Pacific, um, 6 p.m. Eastern. I had to think about that one for a second. And uh, yeah, we have a, a pretty big coin show that's coming this weekend that we're going to build some events around on whatnot. Um, so come join me um, either this afternoon or on Friday, you know, whatever floats your boat. Uh, we'll have just a ton of new inventory. Um, a lot, in most cases, a lot of $1 starts, which is quite exciting. Uh, so yeah, come join the platform. I have my referral link down below. If you sign up today under me, you get $15 off your first item. That's great news. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money to get a very nice impactful item into your collection. All right, so let's do it. Let's go ahead and check things out here, starting out with a couple 
beautiful off center struck coins. The first one right here out of the two that we're going to kick things off with is a 1981 Lincoln Memorial set. This thing is off center by about 50 percent. Um, this is a date that we don't traditionally see pop up in the marketplace, not that often. We see actually more 1980s in contrast than we do 1981. Uh, so these are traditionally uh, collected by date. You know, some people will put a decade set together. You know, it's a good uh, a good collection that doesn't cost like a boatload of money. Uh, you could really get crazy on these if you wanted to. This particular one right here is actually in really nice shape. Um, first pro tip on the photographic side, if you can, take your coin out of the 2x2 two two cardboard holder. You're just going to get much better photos that way. This one ended up selling for $32, which is a really nice sum of money. Um, the, you know, we've seen much more common dates sell for between $10 and $20. This one a little bit higher because of its exclusivity um, as its date is not generally found out there in the world today uh the next one that we have here we're we are kind of like you know a, a tale of two opposites here um th this is by far uh one of the most beloved modern coins um it's got to be that drummer boy bicentennial quarter and you guys you guys know me you know every time we talk about errors especially and varieties there are a couple neat doubled dies on the denver struck uh examples any sort of mint error on a bicentennial quarter equals big bucks this one right here nice uh, albeit it's it's not a crazy off center struck coin uh, this this occurred outside of the collar uh in order for it to be off center like this um but i'm telling you ladies and gentlemen these mint errors cook they're just popular in general um as coll collectors you know they, they are fanboying over you know the bicentennial drummer boy dual date um you know very very unique one year type piece this one ended up selling for a uh, staggering sum of 379 dollars and 99 cents someone put it up as a buy it now auction and then someone scooped it up as quick as you could possibly imagine um the next one that we have here and we haven't talked about groups or lots um, at, on any PCMR here recently. So I was more than happy when I saw this one pop up on the, um, the sold feed. Uh, it's a lot of six assorted Lincoln cents and Roosevelt dime errors. Uh, most of them are either off center struck or broad struck. Uh, I'd say the only one that quite qualifies as a broad strike would be the Roosevelt dime middle center down below. Um, so uh, one of the things I like to look for here, number one, you, you got to figure if you could pick up something like this at the right price, you could resell each individual coin separately back on eBay. The idea is we're going to try and 2x our money on the low end. Uh, that's what we want. Now, when I look at lots like this, which is mostly like off center strikes, I want to see full dates. Good news is, I see exactly that on every bit of the Lincoln cents. I see a 98, a 99, a 2001, and then I see three 1994P Roosevelt dimes. Um, so we are uh, we're good to go, and the price has to be right. So for all six coins here, this one sold for $75 shipped. That's with shipping out the door. Um, so we have to imagine, especially Roosevelt dimes. They're kind of popular today, and I think it's because of the announcement that the Mint was going to be redesigning the dime for 2026 for that semi-quincentennial um, anniversary. Um, so with that being said, it has brought a little bit more light onto Roosevelt Dimes. Those three pieces down below, I could resell those probably for about 30 bucks a piece, buy it now. And then the three Lincoln cents, you know, you're going to be looking at around probably $20 to $25 a piece. Um, this is a no-brainer. We could easily double our money here. If you did find something like this, uh, folks, scoop it up and then just go ahead and, and flip them. Uh, do buy it now listings. You know, they're not going to sell in minutes, but maybe a week or two uh, because it, these are all very highly liquid in today's market. Uh, there's a little bit of a back image on all of them. 
the top right Lincoln scent has a little bit of what looks to be a little bit of damage on the reverse. That really doesn't scare me at all from obtaining this lot. Uh, and here's one that has um, <clears throat> popped up on the scene more and more recently these days. It's the 2021 P, the Philadelphia Minted, Washington crossing the Delaware Quarter. This one has the aforementioned uh, crown die chip, uh, which is the namesake that this was given a long time ago. Um, it's big enough and the most advanced enough die chip that it actually goes in the E pluribus unum there. Um, so this one right here, uh, again, I was more than uh, pleased to see it sell for a decent amount of money, $49.99 as a buy it now hit on this one. Um, and, you know, we're seeing more of these. Uh, the nicer examples will command more money um, like they did, you know, a few years ago. Um, they're not quite two $300 coins anymore um, because a lot of people that wanted these, there was enough supply to fulfill demand. And I still feel like that even in today's world, that is still the case. Uh, here's a 1942 Jefferson Nickel. This is the um, wartime silver composition alloy. Uh, it's got a little bit of manganese in there, 9% to be exact. Um, this one has a nice detached laminated field on the front of the coin. Um, you can tell that this is a wartime nickel because it's got the big large mint mark on the reverse above the dome of Monticello. This one here sold for $32.04. Um, again, that's kind of like par for the course for the much larger delaminations like this one. Uh, we also have this 1996P Jefferson Nickel, okay, pursued in much the same fashion as a lot of the other off-center struck coins. You know, people put date sets together. Um, very nice looking example, nice BU specimen. This one sold for $39.99. There were a few pieces of currency that did pop up here on this episode. Uh, starting out with this one, this is one that um, I would say unequivocally, would um, fall off the radar of most coin dealers. It just looks like an off-center silver certificate, right? Silver certificates kind of grow on trees. Um, e even the much nicer condition notes, you know, they're still very plentiful. So why not have your way and cherry pick some, uh, some special ones, whether it's like a fancy serial number or maybe a minor error like this where there is obviously some misalignment of the print going on here you can see that much fatter margin on the left and it holds true even on the reverse as well so there's more of a miscutting shenanigans going on here with this one uh this one i'm happy to say is sold for 49 dollars 95 cents all right so a nice nice little uh, sum of money uh for this one and i can imagine that someone with the most eagle of eyes could cherry pick this one from a dealer stock for about five bucks or less uh, we also have this one here. It's been talked about before. And I'm, I'm glad to see another one pop up on the uh, the sold archives for the last day. 1960D. Uh, this is a combo variety. It's the FS101 doubled die obverse. This is the small over large date. And it's also RPM number one as well or FS501. So it's a double cherry picker's guide variety. Um, this one here you can see uh, the small over large date uh, components uh, to the date. Um, it, it's, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, you can see the Denver mint mark that's punched north of the primary and actually touches the bottom of the nine there. This particular one is also in really phenomenal shape. This is a coin that's just a continue to grow for years to come. This one um, sold for $115. So, again, another great sale from uh, one of the, uh, the, the fastest growing varieties in today's um, numismatics. Uh, we also have this one here. It is Canadian, but that's okay. Uh, there's still a uh, pretty dedicated group of error collectors for Canadian coins. This is a Canadian scent. Uh, no readable date, but it has a big kind of impression or whatever that is on the reverse there they, they actually call that an indent um that's where either another coin that's already struck or a blank planchet was overlapping this one during the striking process that leads to this particular look here um now what i can tell you 
is that there is a second example somewhere floating around in this world of ours that fits this one like a key, key to a lock. Um, and, you know, if that one even existed and someone was lucky enough to find it, that actually would make the pairing an incredibly valuable um, duo. You know, this one right here, for example, only managed to sell for $24.44. But if you had both pieces uh, of this particular anomaly, um, you know, now all of a sudden you have something that's worth about 500 bucks or more. So I, I've seen them on certain occasions. Um, usually they get lost from each other. Um, so the, uh, um, the prospect of finding that second piece, you know, the odds are pretty long. They're like a lottery shot. Uh, but if you do come across it, you know, that, that's a big win. And uh, this is something, ladies and gentlemen, if you did find it like dealer stock, okay, don't take uh, don't take it too seriously. Not as seriously as you need to. Um, there are like minor mint errors that you can find on much earlier coins that are A, common, and B, they really don't add a whole lot of value, if any, to the coin. This 1897 Indian head sent here features a shallow rim clip right above the word of in United States of America. Um, does have a little Blakesley effect, especially very noticeable on the reverse there on the opposite side of the clip. Uh, this one right here is sold for $32.90. However, take this into consideration. This coin, without the mint error, is a good solid AU5558 brown. And it's still a coin worth thirty to forty dollars. So, if you asked any purist collector of Indian head cents, oftentimes they're going to tell you, "I prefer one without the minor mint error. Um, it's just just much more better that way." So, if you do come across these, um, say in dealer stock or at a show, do not overpay for the minor mint errors on these earlier type coins. Um, and this is, ladies and gentlemen, exactly what I'm talking about. 1989 Lincoln Memorial Cent. Um, it's got the jailhouse clashing there on the obverse. It's extremely strong. And the coin, while far from perfect, looks pretty gosh darn good. What is also really neat is you can see some of the clashing on the reverse as well. Um, going through the, the bays of the Lincoln Memorial, you can even see them up top there as well. Um, these things have been emerging uh, to a whole nother level. These things continue to tick up and up and up. Uh, for the much earlier examples of any die clash error, um, doesn't matter what coin it is. I know Kennedy half dollars are extremely insane right now. Um, they can't command hundreds of dollars for a much similar strong die clash. This one ended up selling uh, for $39.58. So, uh, you know, quite, quite close to 40 bucks. Um, whereas maybe six months ago, this is probably a 25 to $30 coin. So, um, I, I personally noticed the little upticks in these. And again, the older the coin is, the much better it's going to be for a secondary sale. Uh, we have a 1934, $5 silver certificate. Again, a little bit of a misaligned uh, print here. Um, you can see where the blue seal is on the right. It's, it's you know, quite a bit off center from where the word five is. When we look at the back, uh, you can see that it's kind of like miscut. You have a much larger margin at the top. That is also uh, not straight either. Um, so this one definitely would uh, you know command a little bit of attention to an error collector this one sold for seventy dollars and 79 cents with 21 bids and uh, not perfect either 1977 20 dollar bill uh, someone had wrote there on the left hand side 300 with a circle around it so uh, right out of the gate it's it's not a perfect note it does have that problem there uh, any written annotations on note is a problem note um, but, you know, we uh, can't forget these old small size head notes. You know, they're very classic, very iconic. Um, this one right here, when we flip it to the reverse, um, a near full front to back wet ink transfer is what we have here. All right. So you can see some of that base front black design transferred to the back of the note. Um, that, that was um, all ink that was on the impression cylinder um, prior to the 
front being printed. So it transferred from the impression cylinder to the note, and then this is what you have here on this one. Uh, this one sold for $180.62 with 47 bids. Um, exceptional sale. Uh, it's a very strong price. Uh, they, you know, tend to go up quite a bit more. But if this was a full 100% transfer, this thing would be like 300 bucks all day long. And uh, Civil War tokens, you can just find a myriad of different cool things with these. This one um, has uh, pretty strong clash dies and a bunch of cuds and die breaks all around. Uh, this thing is a feast for the eyes. You could stare at this thing for a while. Civil War tokens for a lot of the more common issues they can be obtained for between like $15 to $30. Um, and that's even in rarities as high as like R5. You can get them for that cheap. Um, so, you know, th these were um, uh, struck as a way to combat the coin shortage that they were dealing with during the Civil War. People were hoarding coins during that time. So a lot of the uh, the merchants and, uh, you know, the, the other um, organizations, they were making their own kind of currency in the way of these uh, Civil War uh, tokens and store cards. Uh, so this one right here, very strong example of a bunch of different things happening. Sold for $107.81, and that's with a total of 15 bids. Here's another one of those wedding transfers. This time it's a back to front style and it's a partial. You know, it's probably like a 40% um, transfer of some of that reverse print, 1974 dollar bill. And uh, the reverse, pretty clean. Nothing going on here on this one. Uh, this one sold for $158.29 with 35 total bids. So all the paper money has had a fair amount of uh, bidding activity because the market is so strong at the current moment. Uh, we also have this $19.99 dollar bill. It looks like this one was picked up as a buy it now hit. Um, it's got very minimal wear. It does have a centerfold on there. This is a relatively newer issue as well. Uh, the back, yeah, misaligned. Uh, it's it does doesn't even match the front not even close so when you do look at your notes and you're going through straps from the bank look at both sides you might end up with something like this um, so this one here is sold for forty six dollars and fifty four cents not too bad there uh, 2018 block island quarter okay this is actually quite a minor event on here it looks slightly off center nothing too crazy um, but this one, look at the edge, and it's got a partial tilted collar. Uh, they also call it, um, I guess, a railroad style edge. Um, but uh, the the collar that has, it, which is a die in itself, has the reading pattern on there. So when it's slightly tilted, it's going to just strike up um, half of the reads on your coin. All the while, the extra metal flows that go outwards creating kind of like that rim style right there um, not a big sale seven dollars and 75 cents this is one of those um, mint errors that is still trying to find its footing uh, i know even on morgan dollars they're not particularly expensive but they are neat when you do come across them and uh, one of the more common dates and issues of off center struck washington quarters the 1983p um, you know they could sell really high one moment and then for a bargain the next. And then that's what we have here. We have a bargain example at $16.75 with a couple bids. Um, the last one, as a matter of fact, that I talked about, I think sold for like 40 bucks. Um, so you can see the different extremes of that spectrum. You know, you can either have a really good sale and not a knock against this coin. It looks pretty cool. You know, it's a very clean, uncirculated piece. It's just... There wasn't a lot of interest at that time for this one. Maybe another much nicer one sold moments before this one. Um, and there were also a few really nice large scents that did sell. Some with uh, pretty neat die pairings here. This is an 1839. Um, I guess they still call this matron head, but it's the more advanced. This is the um, the the bridge design uh, between the matron head and the braided hair. Um, so this one right here is the 
uh, Newcomb 4 variety, you know, which is just simply a die pairing. You know, it could be a rare one, could be a common one. I think this one's a relatively common one. A nice VF solid example, nice chocolatey brown. This one right here sold for um, a pretty good amount of money, $187.49, 44 total bids. So uh, the love affair for nice higher grade um, uh, copper just should not be ignored. Uh, the market is uh, pretty good on these, and uh, people want the um, the non-graded types. Uh, this is this is honestly one of those uh, types of U.S. coins where uh, grading is simply not necessary. Most people just like to you know uh, hold on to these and, and collect dates and various die pairings and things like that. Uh, and here's something we don't come across every day: a double struck. Washington Quarter. We have a 1988 Denver. This is a D-minted coin right here. The secondary strike is uh, about 90, 95% off center. So it's a uh, it's a wild one for sure, and it's something that we don't see that often. Sixty dollars and sixty cents with ten bids for here. Um, here's another one of those large cents, and uh, this is one I've talked about before. Just a different different grade. 1834. Um, uh, this one, uh, yeah, this one's still a matron head. Uh, you can see all the die crack connecting all the stars all the way around. That's actually common on these. Um, but what's also neat, and another common anomaly, is the doubled profile, um, which is more strike doubling than it is anything else. Um, so we see that quite a bit on the earlier matron head sets, like this one. And also, cap us half dollars. We see a fair amount of doubled profile um things going on with those and it's all strike doubling uh this one sold for 479 dollars and 50 cents with 23 bids um i don't know what the deal is with this one uh, it does have a recut r on liberty uh now that i see it uh this one is nukem number six so i don't know what the rarity level there if this one turns out to be like an r4 or higher um that would justify the price for sure uh, it's not a rare date, and it's like a VF35, so it's a pretty kind of like middle-of-the-road type of uh, grade on this one. Um, another one we don't cover. We don't cover seeded material that much, so we have an 1891 O seeded dime. How cool is this one? It's got a big, large cut die break on the reverse um, right in the... Um, uh, kind of like the the corn stalk, uh, you know, plant there on the left side, and you could see actually a pre-cut on the same side, just on the right side there with that die crack. Um, loads of personality, you know, I could say that. Plus, this is something that we see quite a bit of during this era of um, coin production. Uh, this one right here sold for seventy bucks, solid. Yeah, it's like a VF twenty five to boot, so it's got it's got some chops on there. 1995P Roosevelt Dime. This one is a nice broad strike, but if you look on the reverse, it's got like the detached reading that is still stuck to the coin. Um, this one I kind of think might have undersold by just a shade. It did sell for $35, uh, but boy, is it such a cool looking coin. This thing has a lot of uh, uh, logic, a lot of edginess to it. It's got a lot of attributes that you just want to stare at for a while. Um, yeah, but that's what it sold for, $35 for this bad boy. And uh, just to let you guys know, yes, there is still some value in the little die chip on the point of Washington's nose quarters. This one is the Eleanor Roosevelt from uh, last year, 2023P model this time. That's a pretty big die chip. It's probably close to a die break at this point. Um, yeah, you're not going to believe it. This one sold for $37, you know, and again, it's not the perfect coin. It's got a few tiny little stains on the front there. Um, but yeah, keep that in mind. This is, this is something that you could still, um, capitalize on even today if you need to. Um, and then finally, we're going to end things off here on quite the unique piece. I've never seen, nor have I covered this one. And I was more than shocked that this one did not sell for more money. Um, so it's a Lincoln Memorial set that we could tell you this this much. It doesn't have a readable date that we could tell you this much. So the coin 
was struck through a later stage cap die that we could see, and it's got an indent, which means there is another coin or a blank planchet that was overlapped onto this coin. So there was two off-center, slightly overlapped coins that were in the striking chamber, and it struck both of them in tandem. All the while, there's this late-stage cap of another coin that's stuck to the um, what I presume to be the hammer die that has the um, the die of Lincoln and the date and things like that. So this is like a dual error for the ages. And the only thing that is missing that would make it a three error is some sort of like brockage. Uh, I saw the other images and then it looks to and appears to be like a slight remnant of a brockage on one of the pictures. Um, I'm just not that convinced. So yeah, I mean, we're talking about two very expensive type of min errors if they were isolated apart, but these are combined into one. $64.24 with 12 bits. I I think that this probably should have been a few hundred dollars easily uh, because, again, I if we were to consider how many of these exist in today's world, there can't be no more than like a handful, you know, uh, like maybe, I don't know, what, half a dozen, if I had to say, uh, across all of the coinage that was ever made by our respective mints. Yeah, I, I just don't see how there could be more of this. I think people didn't quite understand, and there might have been like one bidder in the mix. I mean, it was only 12 bits, but there was probably one bidder that knew exactly what was going on with this thing. And as a result, it's probably doing cartwheels in the living room when he or she won this one. Um, such a cool, very fabulous, unique in its own right. Um, again, a shocker. This one is a pure shocker for this week's PCMR. I'm glad to be able to talk about it. Um, but that's going to go ahead and do it. What a way to, you know, cap it all off here. Information in this video is for entertainment purposes only. That's key. Not financial advice. Please do collect in or grade your coins responsibly. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silver Hound. Thank you guys for tuning in again. Hope to see you guys uh, on the next video or on whatnot or wherever you may see me. I'm going to be at the show in Sacramento this weekend. It's a two-day event. I'll be there on both days, and I hope to see at least one of you there. Um, but outside of that, you guys have a great rest of your week. Best of luck in your hunts, and I hope to cover your coin on a future PCMR. Take care, guys.